Thank you. And away from that now, a truce was reached in Kaduna State at the, as the Atiyap, Fulani and Hausa communities in Zango Kataf local government area unanimously agreed to end the hostilities that claims lives in southern Kaduna. Leaders of the warring communities at the peace summit who committed themselves to peace and forgiveness of each other condemned the killings and destruction that had occurred over the past months. They declared their readiness to help security agencies with information to arrest and prosecute criminal elements. The summit appreciated the government for deploying security forces and commended youth from the various communities for their symbolic embrace and agreement not to mount uh, roadblocks anywhere in the chiefdom. And now we have uh, Danlami Shwaibu, who is from the Hausa community and a signatory to the peace document. Good to have you, uh, Mr. Shwaibu. Uh, good morning. Good, good morning. morning, viewers. Thank you for being with us. We apologize for the network uh, failure earlier. Now, why has a peace summit reconciliation uh, taken place now? Could it be as a result of the recent media attention, you know, in that area? Well, let me just start by uh, correcting one insinuation about the media accord uh, that people have been saying is the media accord this, this, and that. The truth of the matter is that uh, that thing which we signed was a communique which emanated as a result of the dialogue or as a result of the summit that took place. And uh, this is uh, the first time uh, the the, the Chukdom decided to uh, broker this, uh, bring in the three communities together to, to, to see if they can broker peace. So that is what I want to correct mm -hmm. the insinuation. That is one thing. Okay. It's a communicator that we signed because if, we are, if you are signing an accord, you will have to sit down, deliberate, talk on the fundamental issues that have resulted in the unwanted feelings, destruction of properties and other things. Just, so that is the insinuation. That is just one insinuation I want to correct. Okay, so just to and, be... Uh, yes? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. And uh, for, the, for, the, for the summit that has taken place, it was the, the, the Atiyaf Chukdom uh, that decided that uh, uh, let them uh, organize a summit, bring in the three communities, and uh, under a specific term, which we have all agreed, and we sent representative, I was one of them that uh, represented the House of Community. And uh, the, the summit just uh, centered on how do we first stop the crisis? Because there is a lot of incessant killings, there are disruptions of properties, uh, people who are moving, uh, people are seeking refuge elsewhere, the houses, the Fulanis, and the Atiyaf as well. So I think the, 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 the Atiyaf now decided that, uh, okay, let him bring these people together so that they will now talk and discuss and see uh, how we can stop this feeling before other issues can come, where all the fundamental issues that are, are recurring every year, every year, in year, is happening. Mm -hmm. So that is how the... the, the the peace and the reconciliation summit came about. Okay. We were there, we discussed, we deliberated as how to stop the killing as an interim measure. Then we now come back and then sit down, await government uh, directives, government uh, decisions on the program, uh, on the issue, so that the crisis will be over once and for all. All right. Then, I mean, we also have uh, Dr. Ahmed uh, on the line to join in this conversation. So let me quickly bring him in. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, good to have you with us in this conversation. Um, what would... Thank you. Now, what would you say are the significant achievements of this uh, summit? As uh, Dan Lamy is trying to clarify that it's just, it is a summit and not yet a peace accord. Uh, can you help us make sense of that? Yes, uh, the significance of this meeting that held on the 22nd of this month at the, the town hall in Angola, the uh, the actual one of the local government, is, is significant because uh, three generations, more than 40 years, when this project has been going on. And, you know, if you look at the case of South Africa, most of the traditional 
you know, how is it? Um, you know, we are, we are doing this from, you know, a kind of uh, tribal inclination. For example, like what in the North you have the area of Kano, you have the area of Bezo, etc., which means everybody is, that is within that domain. But these children, which are segregated towards tribal men, uh, you know, a kind of basic, very serious problem since from the beginning of the creation of the children. So the issue now is if, for example, the Agua Champion has done this giant strike to see that uh, people are brought together from different diversities, the Hausa, the Fulani, and the Akata people, and on a meeting of that, this has never occurred because, because if you remember, the present Agua Champ is the top in the hierarchy of, you know, in the headship of the Akata kingdom. The first, of course, was the late Manaka State, the second one was the late in the Nabungo, and then this present one. This thing has never happened like that. And we, the from the of the Fulani people, we want to say that uh, we are so happy that this thing is happening. What remains now is the faith in actually seeing to it that what was written and accepted in the community is adhered to strictly without recourse to anything that will lead to pandemonium, that will lead to loss of life, property, and what we want to get. Mm -hmm. What is left now in the entire southern Kaduna is other kingdoms, the Badu, the whoever. To look at what Zango has done, to copy from what they do, so that we can have a kind of universal peace in the entire southern Kaduna. I know we will still have mixed plans, I know we will still have people who go against these decisions, but you see, like I said in the meeting that day, why can't we go and take the Rwandan case? Why can't we look at what happened in the former Germany of East and West, and today they are a country that is even made by a woman? And coming back here in Kaduna, said we have tried that went against each other in the very local government. The Bure and the Kahugu. These people have come back again, and nobody will ever remember that ever something happened like that. Mm -hmm. So, and technically, who think that this thing cannot be achieved? It will be achieved after all. If the first and second world war was fought, this is the, the other world war was fought, and we are still together as a community in the world, and as a nation Nigeria, I think the other church will be commended. And we, from the angle of the Fulani, we are ready to go look and plan it to ensure that we maintain this peace because the bottom line is. The full of women throughout his day in Southern Kaduna or wherever, like I was telling them that day, I was born 61 years ago in, the, in my very village of Samadhi Sakas. My father's grave is just 95 years ago, 61 plus uh, 35. My father lived 102 years before he died, so 102 plus 35 plus 61. Then my grandfather used to also live about 87 years as my dad told me. So 87 plus uh, 102 plus 35 plus 61. Put it together, and then somebody will still tell me that Trump media is a settler. I can't understand, and I try to draw their attention that this individual settler syndrome should be addressed clearly because it was brought into balance in the employment system in Nigeria through the federal character position. Mm -hmm. You cannot see it anywhere in the constitution. So mm -hmm. we want to say specifically that we, the full army, we are ready for this piece, and we want to see from what will happen to the other side, particularly the other people who claim that some are settlers and some are citizens. And I want to assure you that I will stand the Aguatas in person. Would you believe that the Aguatas called me yesterday to find out how I came back from the journey from the Kadabran back to Kaduna and was so impressed that a whole parallel leader of that state can call a mortal soul like me, Yande, to say how was your journey back home. It means whatever he did and what he wants to do and what he intends to do is with good intention. So they are ready. All right. I mean, yes, at this point, what is most crucial is, you know, the quest for peace uh, everywhere. So let's now go to Anlami, who earlier on mentioned that you had signed the communique and then you've gone home awaiting the government's uh, response. While you're awaiting the government's response, I'm wondering, in your opinion, what are the things that needs to be done, you know, to move forward? Uh, okay. Uh, as you have just said, and uh, what I heard from Mala Yende, is uh, is uh, is the the Hausa community too are ready for peace, and uh, from our actions and attitudes, from the since the last 28 years, we'll be able to tell the world, and the world will be able to see that we are, we want peace. And uh, the only thing is that let us let the uh, the three uh, the, the the three communities try to respect try to, to agree, try to respect the, 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 the outcome of this summit. When that is done, I think we are making, we are making progress. 
Okay, so let me also ask um, Dan Lamy there that what hopes do you have that a long and enduring conflict in the community will begin to heal uh, going forward and that the resolutions arrived at will really be accomplished in the end? When, when we are talking about peace, uh, you, don't, you don't just talk about just one main thing and you expect that the peace will, will continue because this crisis has lingered for almost 28 years. And it always started uh, as a result of uh, whenever there is a, a rainy season, whenever rainy season comes, this issue emanated. And, uh, and uh, in the part of uh, the, the house of community, uh, we feel that uh, once agreements are reached and uh, agreements are constructively adhered to, people don't change narratives, we will move forward and there will be peace. But in the situation where you sit down, you make deliberations, you agree that to, 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 to a certain level. But at the end of the day, one part will agree to the agreement and the other part will not agree, or the other part will bring in another thing that is going to disrupt what has earlier been agreed. I think they are, they are not ready for peace.